Hi, how are you doing? This one's been near the top of my to-do list for years, I think, because it's, it's a bit of a short one, hopefully. Um, how do you count ribs on a chest x-ray radiograph? It is fairly straightforward, but I see students making mistakes all the time. If I point at something and say, identify the structure indicated by the pin, I don't want you to tell me it's a rib. I want you to tell me it's the right, one, two, three, right fifth uh, rib. So how do you count ribs on a chest x-ray reliably? I am very busy at the moment. Um, finishing off teaching, but also running exams. If you think I've got almost 300 students over the two years, the exams have 30 questions each. That means there's 9,000 assessment items to mark. We've got a double market, which gives 18,000 items to mark between three of us. I'm a busy boy, we're all busy at the moment. Anyway, so I could do with a short video. The rib cage, um, how many ribs are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. The 12th rib, little floaty guys down here, some people actually don't have them, but you can expect to find 12 ribs on the chest X-ray. Now, when you're looking at a chest X-ray, of course, you've got X-ray irradiation passing through the body and being detected um, at a, in these days, this was a photographic plate. These are well used, these are. Uh, but the X-ray is being detected on the other side of the body. So if the X-rays can pass easily through air, that is gonna appear black on the chest X-ray radiograph. Whereas X-rays don't pass through calcified bone very easily, so bone is white. That means that you can see the ribs as nice and white on the chest X-ray and also the vertebrae, but remember that the ribs anteriorly become cartilage or have this cartilaginous section before they meet the sternum, which means that if you try to count the ribs anteriorly, it's really, really difficult. So there are two rules really for counting ribs. One, start at the top of the first rib, and two, you can see the vertebrae really nicely on the chest X-ray, so start from the vertebra at the posterior part of the rib and follow it round and go one, two, three, four. The trick is that the first rib is an awkward shape. It's a different shape. It's not the same shape as this main set of ribs here. This is an atypical rib. Take a look at that first rib. It's much flatter than the others. It's much wider. It's a very tight curve. It's that shape you're looking for to key you in to where all the other ribs lie. Which means that when people are looking at a chest X-ray, sometimes they get confused by that. So if we look at this chest X-ray here, it's a bit overexposed, this one, but can you see that shape there? There's the first rib. When you start seeing it, it becomes very distinct. So there's the first rib. And then we start, remember, from the vertebrae, second rib. And what you want to do is you want to one, to you want to carefully follow it round and then when you get your eye in even though it's overexposed and all these bones are overlapping out here you'll follow them around quite nicely so what about this one over here can you see again that first rib is a distinct shape so here are the vertebrae they're nice and visible and up high we can see this tight curve of the first rib Note that the second rib is very nearby. So we start at the first rib and we go first rib, second rib, third rib, fourth rib, fifth rib, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, there's the 11th and well, we're, we're losing 12. We see 12 over there, right? So that's the method. Start, always start with the first rib, look for that particular curve, and then methodically work your way down. Whenever you're looking at bones, it's always good to follow edges. You can follow the top edge or the bottom edge or whatever you want. Don't get confused by the clavicle here. Here's the clavicle extending out to the shoulder. You can see that it's a straight bone. Do you want to do another one? Um, this one's really contrasty, isn't it? One, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And on this side, that first curve and then the second one, it's so much easier to do from where the rib starts at the vertebra. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This x-ray is particularly helpful if you're trying to count ribs because you can see them nice and, nice and clearly. They're very well defined over here. Um, it's a little bit harder on this side because you've got all that pesky lung in the way, making it harder to see the ribs here. It looks like we've got a bit of a, a bit of a pneumothorax, so the lung has been pulled away. Not great for the patient, but very helpful for, for you. Doctors often talk about a posterior rib and an anterior rib, which as an anatomist always unsettles me a little bit because, <laughs> because it's, it's just a rib. They're using shorthand, of course, to describe the posterior part of the rib, as in the posterior part of the rib, and then the anterior part of the rib, which, you know, disappears on the x-ray as we get to the cartilage there. Um, so don't get confused by that. When they're talking about posterior ribs, they're just saying this bit of rib here. So you can see the vertebrae, you can see the rib starting posteriorly. This is the posterior part of the rib and it curves around. And after it is curved around laterally, it becomes the anterior part of the rib around here. Um, and, you know, it's somewhat easy to get lost as they all overlap here laterally. But with practice, and you just kind of keep your eye in with the curve, you can be nice and accurate. Now, if you, if you continue to struggle with counting ribs, then you need to move from the 2D to the 3D, and you are gonna to need to go to a lab with a skeleton for this. This is a plastic skeleton here. You're in every video, I think. Um, and you need to kind of become the camera. You need to look, put your head in the, in the position that the X-rays have passed through to the collector on the other side and relate this two-dimensional image to this three-dimensional shape here. And for students that get really stuck, this seems to be like the, the final mechanism. Can you see the, the shape of the curve of the first rib here? There's the clavicle going across. There's the second rib posteriorly, third rib, fourth rib, fifth rib. Again, you're seeing this in two dimensions. You need to be here with me with your two eyeballs uh, looking at this in three dimensions. Um, to get so your brain gets those shapes. That's what the two eyes and the 3D bit is all about, right? How's that? It is very important to be able to count ribs on an X-ray. If you're gonna count ribs, it's then very important that you get it right. Um, and when you get the hang of it, it's okay. So always find the first rib, always find that tight curve. Um, always start from the posterior rib where the rib leaves the vertebra posteriorly and work your way round in a methodical fashion, just like you do with everything else in the chest x-ray. And you'll be confidently and accurately counting ribs. All right, well, I hope that was useful. See you next week.